Hey everyone, so just before we start this video, I wanted to mention that I have started coaching 2NL uh, paid. So if you are interested in that, um, you can let me know, send me a message via YouTube, or I'll put a link down below um, with my email address that you can contact me on. I'm also going to be offering uh, my personal notes from everything I've learned so far in 2NL um, that have helped uh, a lot of people improve um i've coached you know i don't know I, I mean i've been a part of like i don't even know how many discussions for tour now now and also made a whole bunch of videos um going through when i was learning with someone else as well as showing other people how to be two and so if you are interested in someone that's that started from scratch and has uh has beat two and multiple times have been bit you know been uh got to five and now lost and then um and then worked my bankroll up back to five and now again um playing two and now then definitely uh contact me below this video uh was a coaching session that i had with a guy whose screen name is gail and you'll be able to see where he started from and all the insights that he gets from the video i haven't shown the notes that i provided him so during the video we were writing notes basically and i also was referencing my own notes so that i can sort of fill in the gaps so like i can see where he's at and fill in the gaps um that i can see that he doesn't have yet for six max to an hour and so i haven't provided those but if you're interested in those i will um, be selling those as well um so if you want that as well just contact me via email it'll be like five five dollars or something usd and yeah, that's about it. Enjoy the video. All right, sweet. So this is my <clears throat> poker tracker. So as I said here, so this is my six max graph. And unfortunately, it's kind of going down. And mm -hmm. then I do have my 2NL graph. And then for, well, all dates, I guess. So this is kind of, I don't know how it's been going. I did have a couple of really bad tilt sessions here that were kind mm -hmm. of really killing my, my win rate. But overall, it's slowly winning, right? Yeah. Over 100,000 100, 100, hands. So I did play quite a bit of hands. Um, and yeah, my overall goal, as I mentioned to you earlier, is basically to try to move up stakes uh, to actually play live. I actually am more interested in playing live, yep. but I feel it's much cheaper to learn at first, you know, with a smaller bankroll playing online. And mm -hmm. to be honest with you, playing 1-3, I feel the people at 2NL Zoom are actually better than in my local casino playing 1-3. Interesting. Already. So, yeah. yeah, so maybe like 2NL and 5NL, I feel like if you can beat, you can probably beat 1-3. Uh, and, and I heard that maybe 25NL is comparable to a bit of 2-5 and 50NL. So that's basically the goal, is to kind of reach to those two stakes eventually. But the Sick. first hurdle is 2NL Zoom. So I do have some issues with actually the 6-max. Interestingly, mm -hmm. I was somewhat able to do 9-max Zoom, all right. But my 2NL uh, Zoom that's fast i might be just getting um uh what is it called i might be just getting kind of burnout i've yep. been playing for a for a while now and uh, maybe just kind of burning out a little bit so that's why i'm kind of making some mistakes but <clears throat> i don't know what was your that's sort of strategy of... for because I, I you've got 100k hands were you four tabling that or two tabling what? yeah so at first i was just playing so actually here in the beginning i'll show you my kind of how i worked so here is my all date so for example for this first period i was actually doing right here if you actually notice my red line was going up really mm. strongly right and i was actually winning by like 10 big blinds and per 100 <laughs> and that was me playing actually one table oh you're right. was me playing one table and me playing just this one song one of my strategies where i was kind of looking kind of a, just trying to play a bit more exploitatively i guess mm. and i was just kind of figuring out a lot of places where people would fold and a lot of places where i could steal yeah. and i was working with one of my coaches that was an absolutely excellent and he's killing as i said 200 and l and so forth mm. but the thing is um and he kind of taught me some things and that, that really just worked really well at this particular level to steal yeah. a lot then i did have some feedback from some people i was looking on reddit that they were saying you should probably focus on the on the green on the blue line because that will give you more uh, uh probably a bit more prof profitability and yeah. that's what i started doing unfortunately i had a really bad tilt session and then after that i started right around here after the tilt session i started to do that just exactly that we started to have you know a bit more focus on the blue line and then even further more down at this point after another tilt session so i really have to kind of work work about on my emotions a little bit i think but yeah that's kind of where i'm at right now yeah, yeah. and then 
so my my general strategy is I um, I have some I think some very similar ranges to what you have. Uh, it's just that I have quite a bit of stronger. I think I, I three bet quite a bit out of small blind, and I employ quite a bit, basically a three bet or full strategy from the small blind, yeah. and I three bet quite a bit uh, as a preflop uh, raiser. And usually when I'm in the, for example, button against the blinds. I'm employing a polarized strategy for mm. c-betting while I am actually playing in as a preflop raiser against other positions I'm using more of a merge c-bet strategy. Okay. So those are the two strategies I'm using to basically preflop uh, and postflop, I mean. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, um I mean it's good to know. I think yeah, the the current strategy in 2 now like uh, I'm I mean, I'm, 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 I think this, uh, the folding strategy, I'm not sure if, if you were doing it on, um, six max or nine max, but, uh, like I haven't tried out like your strategy. It looks like you're doing quite well with that, um, to begin with, uh, it was going up, it's going up pretty steadily. It looks like, what is that? Probably about like five or six big blinds per hundred, maybe even more than that. Um, here, yeah, for the first couple of, yeah, the, this particular one that I was doing was almost 10 big blinds up to here on here. This yeah. was about 10 big blinds uh, per hundred. Yeah. And that was that particular strategy that, that I was using. And yeah, it worked really well. And lots of people were surprised to see it. I posted it on Reddit hmm. and there was only one or two other guys that I ever saw do this. They were basically, they're like, how the heck are you possibly getting people to fold into an L? And it was very interesting for me to hear that because for me, that was super easy. Yeah. And then the, and then afterwards, again, as I said, I had a bit of a tilt session and then I started going back to more traditional one. Hmm. And I did try in six max and six max, I find people are a lot more call station and they're a lot yeah. more sticky post swap. So yeah. it just doesn't work. In yeah, 9 yeah. max, I find people are a lot more tighter. Interesting. Well, that, that, yeah, that, that's so, super interesting because you could probably take that to uh, cash games, like bigger cash games as well. Uh, that exactly. That's, yeah. So that's the thing. So, yeah, it's 9 max was kind of more similar to me, kind of how I was in the casino at some typical 1 3. Hmm. Well, 6 max was a lot more aggressive. And I, I think I have a hard time adjusting now because hmm. after having 100 hands, Hundred thousand hands played at nine max. I find it very difficult to transition to six max, and I'm kind of getting obliterated. Uh, so I'm <laughs> a little bit frustrated over that. Yeah, no, that happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's kind of this is my six max graph, as I said. So this is basically since I played, uh, since I started playing uh, after the hundred k hands, I started playing. It was on the fourteenth, and then um, I. No, this is all dates. This is so. This is the first couple of ones actually were before I was before I even get coaching. So it was actually since the fourteenth. So this is more. This is kind of after I played those hundred thousand hands. Mm. This is kind of what you're looking at, and as you notice, like my blue line is kind of like, yeah, I'm just kind of calling down probably too light, and my red line is just getting demolished. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, I like um, like you were mentioning before, like people talking about uh, GTO and stuff like that. I I find that yeah, a lot of people want to overcomplicate, like including myself, that we want to overcomplicate two and L, um, where we're right. saying like. You know, oh, I think they're bluffing in these spots. They've got this hand range. They're, they're, uh, you know, this is a good bluff, bluff spot for them. Whereas, like, uh, what I'm finding is that people just don't think that way. Like, I actually had a really interesting session because, I mean, I've been, I'm sort of the same as you. Like, I played for about a month straight of two and now, uh, and that's that's how long it took me before I clicked. I'd say, well, maybe like three weeks, and then I clicked, and I was like, ah, oh, this is how you beat two and now, and then I just went sure. right. Um, but. Like, it was kind of interesting. Like, I, I had people around uh, a couple of days ago, and playing live with them, I got to see exactly how 2NL players are thinking, basically, because it's, it's, it's very similar thought process. Like, you've got people that are interested in poker, and they play the game, uh, but uh, they don't uh, they don't necessarily, necessarily think as deeply as we think they do um right yeah and and i noticed that when i when i was watching them i saw very similar tendencies to what 2nl players will be doing and it's i think it's very easily very easily exploitable but also um it's uh it's a very um how do you put it it's a game that's more focused around your mindset rather than actually uh playing st uh, strategic poker um, so that is what I'm thinking. I think you're yeah, right. Yeah, it's a mind. It's it's a mindset game. So it's uh, to me, right. two and L is is uh, mindset wise. If we were gonna if we we're gonna write down any notes on that, it'd just be. I'll just check it up here. Uh, the mindset for two and L is uh, is uh, patience. Mm -hmm. And 
I want to say stability. Or, uh, I'm just going to say discipline. Yeah. Discipline. Uh, di oh my god. <laughs> yeah, and I find that Sagano is the same case for like, oh, I, the in my in my city, it's interesting, we have three casinos around. I live in Vancouver, Canada, and we have actually quite a bit of uh, live poker going around. And we have, you know, all the games from 1-3 to 5-10, yeah. which is decent. And the thing is, I find in these games, they're like 1-3, it's basically all about patience. Yeah. Right. It's not much to do about strategy. Not really talking, thinking very deeply. It's just you know what you're knitting it up, hmm. and people are going crazy, and you're catching them. There's not much really to it. It's not yeah. you know the most exciting thing in the world, but it's what I feel gets you the money. There is yeah. maybe few bluffs you do with c betting and here and there, but apart from that, it seems to be that mm -hmm. that's kind of the general strategy. Now in two analysis, I'm not quite sure how exactly yet, and I'm not even sure in one three exactly what is the most optimal. I'm just learning as I, as, as I mentioned. This is yeah. me just playing. You know, for like last two months. Well, there are some pretty fun stuff that you can still do in uh, in um, two and L. So it's not completely new. Oh, um, and you can take that. I'm pretty sure you'd be able to take that to um, other games as well. Uh, so, but before we get into that, I want to also talk about like what like what do you think the goals are for two and L? Like, what are we what are we trying to where where do we get most of our money from in six max? Like, we just like blindly where do you think uh, we're getting most of our money from? So I think the most amount of money that you can generate is basically because people call down too light. So you having basically the better hand at showdown and the other way you can get the most money is basically by stealing blinds because yeah. they're usually they're not defending too much. And the third place, I think that you can get a lot of money in 2NL is actually by three betting uh, and then continued to continue continuation betting. I find those three spots are like where print the most money in 2NL. Those are the three. Those are the three places that I found myself where you I feel you can get the most money. So of course, you know, having the best out of showdown, thus you know, people calling down too light, stealing the blinds, and then basically light three betting, and maybe continuing betting on the three bet. It seems to print a lot of money. Those are the those are the places I found. I might not be right, but that's kind of what I that's kind of what I had an observation with. Yeah. So well, I think uh, you're right about two, uh, and that is stealing blinds and having the best hand more times than other people at showdown because we we play tighter ranges than most people right? right and so a lot of the time we get a lot of money when we have the better kicker um mm -hmm. or they're calling us with second pair um mm -hmm. so it's no secret that two and our players don't like to fold um right but they can still have better hands than us a lot of a lot of the time and they still you know they still know what a set is they still know what a flush is and right. everything blah 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 um it's more just that part of their range like when they hit the hit their um, second pairs and they hit their top pair um, bad kicker, that's that's where we make like a whole bunch of money. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's very easy to, like I'm not, I'm not sort of one of those people that'll be like, ah, oh, two and our players are like really stupid. Like I, like, I, don't, I, I don't think that at all. I'm, I'm more thinking that um, they're here to have fun um, as are we, but they're playing a different game. They're like, if I hit something, I want action. Um, and that's, that's why that they, um, they take those lines, like they'll, they'll continue, continue betting or they'll continue calling, even though, um, they don't really have a very good hand. And if they were playing at higher stakes, they would definitely be folding, um, to a lot of our bet sizings. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but it's interesting that you mentioned the three betting stuff, because I, I did experiment with that for a while and I found that, um, I was actually losing a lot of money when I, when I was getting into big three bet pots and c bidding or just three bit three bit pots in general and c bidding um and uh just stopping doing like pretty much just saying i'm only going to three bit um jack jacks plus uh and sorry jack, yeah jack, jack jack plus ace king um plus like say if i was um versus versus under the gun those are the only things i'm betting and then maybe a bit wider like say versus small blind versus the um, versus the button, maybe I'm three bidding ace ten suited, um, and uh, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even three bet king queen suited. Like ace ten suited is like my lowest that I'll three bet, and maybe eights versus the versus the button. 
Um, yeah, so I'll show you right now. I have a range. So this is, for example, my range for that I was that mentioning that I was using, for example, small bind versus the button. That was kind of my three bet only strategy that I would have. Yeah. I would have a fold or three bet only. So that's kind of what I would be doing. So yeah, I see I have a, quite a bit more into that. And then usually if they call, I would just like, you know, basically a half pot it. And I get, mm -hmm. I, I, I did this and I like almost more than half more than half the percent of the time they will fold right and they would just outright fold a lot of times too when you three bet mm. but of course if you get four bet you just kind of you're kind of letting go most of the time unless you have the premiums at the time yeah, yeah. i mean i'd be interested That's to see how much money you make with that over time because i did try uh, like a large three betting strategy and i wasn't i wasn't profitable doing it but i mean it was yeah. before i was playing i uh, i learned a lot since I, i've done that so i'm wondering if i can do a bit better now like with a lot of those hands i'm actually calling because i'm finding that um in turn out people are they're c-betting too much when they shouldn't be um and it becomes uh -huh. very obvious when they're not hitting a hand plus um and it becomes also very obvious when they have hit a hand and then when you hit a better hand with one of those you know one of those uh, suited connectors the suited hands um that you showed just before um then it's very easy to stack people. Like it's it's very easy to get a lot of money out of people. I shouldn't say stack. Just I see. you can get a lot of money out of people by not three bidding. Because as soon as you three bit, they're thinking you've got Jack Jack plus Ace King. Um, right. Like that. That's all they're thinking. So they've they've put you on a range. They're like this guy's got a really good hand. But as soon as you call um, small vine versus button, they don't know what the hell you've got. Right. And so they're playing their hand. And as soon as you hit something big, you can just raise the pot as high as you want, especially when they're sea bidding into you. Um, but we'll get, um, we'll get into a bit more detail as, as into what we can get into reading. But do you want to first up load up poker stars and I'll cut the, yep. your bank balance out of the video if it's not already hidden. Um, and then just do uh, like some one table. I mean, it's fine. Oh, it's cool. not a big deal. I have like uh, 58 bucks on it right now. Okay. I had up to, I had up to all the way up to like a hundred bucks. Yep. beating even like beating nine and nine max and i want to beat what is it called uh what is it called uh two six max it's not really a big deal so I, I, okay. i'm not <laughs> privacy wise i don't care <laughs> people can know i have 58 dollars <laughs> and three cents or whatever else take your back yeah. <laughs> yeah all right no that's cool <laughs> hack me all right yeah so, uh go for it yeah so, load up one so table just we... one table yeah sure one table okay I think it could be quite difficult to just talk about yeah, of course. talk while you're playing um, and just, yeah, uh, yeah, just talk while you're playing, like what you're thinking. And uh, I won't say anything. Yeah. We'll just, I'll just see what you're doing. All right. So here we're going to check. I'm not going to really try to isolate. Uh, this is just all in pot and I'm pretty much kind of done with it here. I. I do know sometimes when they limp in, they could have kind of a weak ace X type of hand. They can have king yep. weak hand type of hand. And sometimes actually they do have ace king. I find quite a bit actually. Sometimes when they're limping in, like especially under the gun. Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, I'm just going to kind of check it down and kind of give up. Okay. I'm, I'm not really interested in this particular pot. Maybe at this point on a turn, I could have bet once. Yeah. Oops. All right, can you sit out this hand as well? I just want to talk about that last sure. one because there, there's definitely some money we can make in that, that, that sort of, those situations um, after you play this. So in this, so in this particular hand, because uh, he's opening me up here, and my and I'm thinking right now that I have Ace Jack here. It's a pretty good hand, so I'm going to go ahead and three bet it in this particular case. Um, this was kind of the strategy that I was using. I see here there's one person here. It's a little bit of a rec player. We take it down here, and I'm sitting out. Cool. All right, let's yeah. go back to the first hand. Sure. Yeah. Doo, doo, doo. All right. So what I've noticed, and uh, an easy way to pick up like small amounts of money in, in these situations, right? You're totally right. Um, we can just say that limpers have just a ridiculously wide range, and you're totally yep. also right. We don't want to be raising with hands like this. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, when he doesn't bet on the first street. It pretty much means that he hasn't hit, because in the, in these small pots, if they hit anything two five or king, um, mm -hmm. they're gonna they're gonna bet like it just that's just how it works. They're gonna bet, and so what it means is that when the four comes, um, you can just bet two, and a lot of time you'll just fold out their, their entire range, even if they've got ace, they don't call. Um, uh huh. I yeah, see. it's very it's it's weird, but uh, like you'll be folding out maybe 
uh, 75 to 80% of the time, I'd say, uh, when they check. when they Right, so... Yeah, instead of okay, submitting. that makes sense, actually. Yeah, and so you can so just be two. Submitting. Just be yeah. two. Yeah. yeah, go at two, and then, yeah, so the thing is you can go... Okay, that makes sense, yeah. That, yeah. that, that I agree with you. Yeah, and then you don't have to continue on further streets, uh, even if you of hit, course. you can be like, I might... Uh, you, well, you could, we, we can still decide. Like, it's like if 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 he calls your two here, then you you put him on a four because he would have bet with a two five or king. Um, you can say four or ace high, um, and then if if you hit a six or a ten on the turn, you can target fours and ace high on your on on the river. Um, right. If that makes sense. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's it's yeah, and and that kind of thinking is actually um, pretty much the core of what <laughs> we're looking at in two and hours. It's like. Uh, when people aren't betting, they don't have anything. Um, and we, we put them a, pretty much say like as a blanket rule, like sure. Some people will, um, will trap, but it's very, very uncommon, very uncommon. It's like, you know, you're looking at maybe 2%, 2 to 5% of hands. People are actually trapping, maybe even less than that. It's a very, very small margin, um, that people are trapping, um, at all into an L and, uh, okay. Yeah, so it's like if people aren't betting, you can do uh, you can do a like a small bet on the turn, um, okay. a turn the, a lot of the time, right? And then if they call that, you can put them on like we were saying, you can put them on a certain range because they would have bet on the flop if they had anything, and they would have, uh, and uh, because they're calling now, it means that they've they've got they've hit something, right? They've got something. So basically, they're just very transparent. You mean? <clears throat> yeah, like, they're very transparent. They don't bet if they don't. Okay, yeah, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, and and those are the spots that like uh, that we can make a lot of money just by being like, okay, they're being very transparent with their hand. Um, they've missed it. They don't have a flush draw because otherwise they would have probably bet because people in two and hour love to bet their draws. Um, and yeah, we can just take it down pretty pretty safely. Um, okay. And then if we look at the ace jack hand as well. Cool. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I think the the three bits fine here. Ace jack's fine. I think I would also three bit ace jack. Wouldn't do ace ten off, but ace jack sure. Um, and this is the thing is I wouldn't do it against every single position. For example, I wouldn't do it under against under yeah, your gun. Yeah. I think against the cutoff it's fine, and against yeah. the button for sure as well. I think against the hijack it's probably also a little bit uh, iffy, and definitely not under against under the gun. I think I would be folding actually if you under the gun opened up. Yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, yeah. Yeah, your ranges seem like they're they're fine. We'll have a, we'll have a close look at them as well. But yeah, in this yeah. spot though, I would say that um, your sizing, uh, you just want to make it scarier pretty much because uh, okay. like. And that is just making it twenty cents instead of eighteen cents. Um, okay. Yeah, th that's what I was suggested by like Helena, and it seems to work pretty well. When you have four bidding, us oh, sorry, three bidding out of position, we want to make it twenty cents. It's just a bit scarier unless we want them to call, and then we make it eighteen cents or sixteen. Cents. Okay, sure. Yeah. I was actually thinking eighteen would look scarier because like the eight at the end psychologically makes it look bigger than twenty. No, it's, zero. it's the other way around. It's because uh, it's like uh, well, this you know like when you go to buy something in a store, they make it. They make it nine ninety nine. They don't make it. Yeah. They don't make it ten. Ah, yeah, I so see. It's that's the other way around point. psychologically. Oh, I see. So you want to actually make it twenty? Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah. I see. I see. So they make it. Oh, it's a discounted. It discounted twenty. Discount. Yeah, exactly. Discount. Um, Two cents discount. Funny thing is though, when you do it, so you do it bigger on like the early streets. Um, sorry, do rounded numbers for the early streets because they look bigger. But then on the on the river, um, for some reason, when you bet rounded numbers, like big round numbers. Um, it looks really bluffy. Um, I'm not sure why. It, like I think Charlie talks about it as well uh, in the, in the Epiphany channel. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's like for some reason it just looks a lot more bluffy when you bet rounded numbers or you bet like the pot size. Um, who knows why? I don't know. I don't know why psychologically it's like that. But yeah, so it's like before before the before the river, um, rounded numbers look pretty scary. But on the river, they look bluffy. It's kind of strange. Mm, interesting. Okay, that's interesting. I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. So, you, so like in a lot of situations where it's like, say, say the pot's like sixty-eight cents or something, you've got a killer hand, uh, and you're putting your opponent on like top pair, or or even second pair, you can bet like a dollar, <laughs> um, eighty cents, ninety cents, one one dollar, um, or sixty-eight cents, and uh, 
a lot of the time they're going to be thinking this person's either got nothing or I'm beating them. Um, yeah, <coughs> and they just call. Like it looks, it looks. Oh, it's weird. Yeah, a lot less scary than a shove, but like, yeah, learning what I mean. That's why I'm learning now is like learning how to get maximum value, and I think a lot of the time I should be beating less than. It's a lot to do, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. It's a lot to do with these numbers, the psychological numbers. I feel than it is with the actual percentages, right? Yeah, it's that's, that's the true. thing. It's like they're not really thinking about that type of sense. They're more of like, yeah, I just kind of want to. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. weird. <laughs> no, no, you're totally right. And but uh, when you're four tabling. I mean, you, it doesn't matter as much because you're not really being as efficient with the amount you're earning anyway. It's more just, uh, I guess you're being more efficient with your time because you're playing more tables, but we're not being as efficient per table um, because we're playing more tables. Um, so it's okay doing it when you're doing multi-tables. Um, but anyway, let's continue. Let's do a few more. Yeah. Well, I think at first I'm going to focus on one or two tables at most. For Again, when I'm, I've am played three or four tables when I play six max, but yeah, so this is just a clear fold. Um, so let's see, there's one other person here. That's a wreck. Uh, queen nine offsuit, I'm not opening there. Uh, that four as well, not opening. One person is a wreck. Okay, this could be a decent hand to set mine with. Mm-hmm. So my yellow tag is that he is a bit fishy and that he doesn't four bet aces pre flop. Oh, so we had our set. So in this case right here, I am thinking about check raising actually, because this person is a bit on the Fisher side. However, it is a bit wet as well. And I could also see myself actually just flat out leading here. Mm-hmm. But I have a feeling this person will continue being a bit more fishier, I guess. And I'll opt out more for a check raise. So he does. And at this point, I'm opting out for a check raise. So you're saying that they do not like flat numbers. So we're going to try to go ahead and maybe make it like 28. Mm-hmm. You do what you normally do. Yeah. yeah. I'd usually bet around 24, 26. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Do, do you want to uh, sit up as well? Yeah, sure. Okay. All right, let's go talk about that hand. Um, sure. Okay, so... So this hand is... Uh, uh, a good a good, good way to look at it uh, for two and out, right? So if I go back to the flop... Oh, sorry, go to the flop. Yep. Um, yep. So people in two and out like to see bet. They know about C betting. They're like, I'm going to see bet 50%, around 50%, pretty much every hand, right? Um, and uh, he's going to be see bidding the same, pretty much the same, maybe even a little bit bigger if he's got over pairs, right? And that's almost like what we're targeting here. We're targeting like ace nine over pair, maybe right. maybe eights um, that he'll call with, maybe sixes, and also the flush draw. Um, yeah. Uh, but probably he might even be folding the nut flush draw. I don't know. But uh, when 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 we're um, when we are three bidding here, sorry, not three bidding, re raising, cheek raising. Um, at the moment we don't know if he's hit anything at all right and so uh, it's sort of like given the board texture it can be quite dangerous if we go another street and a club hits right Um, or if we go on another street and an eight or a six hit um, we're in like sort of a danger spot because if he continues betting and we've just called there then um, then we're like oh well we don't really have the best hand a lot of the time now right Right, and so that's that's sort of like why we check raise here because it's like we like we want him to pay for a lesser draw. Um, right, you're targeting flush draws and any straight draws and also over pairs, right? Exactly, um, and I think that uh, a lot of the time check raising here uh, on this particular board, I think we even might want to wait one street um, and just risk risk him hitting, you know. He doesn't have that many outs. He's got the six, the six, eight, or the clubs, right? Um, mm-hmm. Risk him hitting one of those um, for the chance to see him continuation bet on the turn, because this is this okay. is one of the things that I've seen in, um, and, and sorry, and only in this particular spot. Like, say if we had over, like if we had high cards, so like ten jack, queen, king, ace, and we had a five. So 
So like a likelihood he has one of those higher cards already, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like it's it's a lot more likely that uh, and and he's going to be C betting because he's hit uh, a higher card. And also, there's not as much risk for us um, to sorry. Uh, on this board, it's like you know, it's it's pretty unlikely that he's opening uh, eight six. Uh, sixes, eights, and, con- and continuation betting sixes and eights here, right? Because people don't see bet, um, people don't see bet their like uh, second pairs that often, right? Um, they're like, oh, there's a nine and a seven on the board. I'll just check my check back my six or check back my eight. Um, but he's still see betting his flush draws. But there's not there's not that many hands, right? There's not that many hands he can have here except for flush draws and over pairs that he's actually betting. Maybe a nine. Yeah, flush draws, ace, nine, and over pairs. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, in this particular board, it might even be better to just, just wait one street, see if he C-bets, uh, C-bets the turn, uh, because um, that's that in 2NL is when you know someone has a hand. If someone in 2NL is C-betting the turn, um, and they're doing it at a similar sizing or bigger, then you basically know they've hit something, and instead of... Uh, Instead of three betting small here, we can actually three bet like five times, and you get a lot of calls. You can even you can even shove <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> where it's just okay. Because on the turn, like you you notice this as well uh, in Twitter. I'm not sure if you've noticed it already, but yeah, a lot of the time people are c betting the flop, and then if they don't hit anything or they don't have anything on the turn, they just give up. But if they right. have something like anything at all on the turn and they've c bet the flop, they will continue. Um, and so they basically said, I've got, I've got something right right now. We don't know if he's got something he might, he might not. But then on the, if he's seeping the turn, he's basically indicating to us, I've got a hand and that's where we can be like, okay, let's, uh, get some, get some big money out of him pretty much. Um, yeah, I did notice, for example, that like, for example, any raise on a, basically <clears throat> on a turn is pretty much deadly. I noticed that from yeah. like nine max and also six, six max, uh, sometimes, sometimes not, but for the most part, yeah, it's usually like two pair plus. Yeah. So yeah. I think, um, I mean, you'll have to test it out and see and maybe get more uh, an intuition for it as well. But just saying, okay, this board, um, maybe I want to risk having a worse hand and being, a, being able to make more money than him just folding. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, that's what I would think about because on the turn, if someone's c bidding the turn, we can make a lot more money out of them than if they're c bidding the flop. Um, but we, you know, we are taking that risk. Um, so okay, so in your opinion, for example, on these the boards, basically the five, nine, seven, but basically there is unlikely that he has something like ace ten, ace king, or king queen, yeah. those type of hands, right? That he hasn't hit, then you would actually opt out for just calling, mm-hmm. even though there's a risk of a flush draw coming in. But if it was, for example, let's just say five, king queen right and then maybe double flush draw like you know two, two like same 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 clubs like same two clubs for example hmm. and that place you would probably more be more comfortable to check raise at that point yeah yeah things like that where it's like they're going to be calling anyway with those high cards that they're probably hitting um right right okay that makes yeah. a lot more sense okay sure but i to be honest like i think you can even uh you can even just check back those boards as well and say i'm just going to be really big on the the turn if they if they're betting on the turn um yeah, because okay. I mean, we we're basically guaranteeing that they've hit something. Um, but then you could also argue that, like, because they're going to give up on the turn anyway, then we can just three bit it here. We, you know, we can re-raise here because they're going to be giving up if they don't have anything anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind either. Um, but it's it's definitely worth thinking about. Like, I think you can get a lot more money out of someone on the turn if you know okay, that they have something. Cool. Yeah. So say so say maybe maybe even doing it against people that are, have a higher um, st- like their stack size is larger or something like that because you know if their stack size is larger it means that if we see if we re-raise on the turn instead of the uh, instead of on the flop it means that we can get um, a lot more of their money in um, than we would if we were doing it on the um, on the flop if that makes more sense. Um, yeah, sure. Okay. 